last week I went on a bit of an anxiety trip about the environment. I saw something on TikTok and it made me think about how environmentally friendly my finances are. So I decided I was going to take some action and I looked into a few different things that I can do. Now if you've been watching my videos for a while you know that I have been thinking about this already. Lots of my investments are ESG investments. I'm creating an ESG portfolio where I'm picking individual companies and looking at their credentials. And I'm also working actively to make sure that a lot of what I do is eco-friendly from banking to energy providers to places that I shop. So I'm doing a lot of work on this already, but I thought I would look into this a little bit deeper. So hello, I'm Charlotte Jessup and this is the Looking After Your Pennies YouTube channel. My aim is to bring you financial education but with an eco-friendly twist. I talk about everything from budgeting to making money, from frugal living right through to investing and pensions. So today I thought about what we can do to make our finances environmentally friendly, particularly climate friendly. So this means that we are looking at reducing the carbon emissions of our money and just how we can use our money to do good things for climate change rather than the negative things that they might be doing at the moment. So we're going to look at five different areas for this. The first one is we're going to look at our day-to-day -day finances, everything from banking, savings, loans, that sort of thing. Then we're going to look at your energy provider. What can you do there to make a difference? Number three, we're going to look at your investments and to see if there's any room for improvement there and what sort of impact it can have. Number four, we're going to look at your business. I know lots of people that watch my videos have side hustles or their own businesses. So we're going to see what you can do to make your business climate friendly and environmentally friendly. And then finally, I'm going to talk a little bit about carbon offsetting and how this can be a part of your process for becoming more eco-friendly going forwards. Remember, this is financial education. This is not financial advice. This is just here to give you some food for thought and not to be taken as a direct order on what to do with your finances. If you need further information about what you should do, then reach out to an FCA regulated financial advisor. We're also going to be talking about investing and you need to remember that when you're investing, your money can go down as well as up. So you need to remember that if you're making any tweaks to anything to do with your investments, you're adding money to your investments or anything to do with your pension. So let's jump in. So number one, banking. So the way banks work is they take your money and then they lend it out to other people and they charge those people interest. Now you get interest on your money because they give you some of the profits from loaning that out. But banks also have an investment arm. So sometimes they might be taking your savings, investing it and then keeping the profits for themselves. Even if they're not doing this, they're likely to be taking some of their profits. So this is when you're paying interest on things like mortgages, loans, credit cards, overdrafts, and using that money to invest. This then increases their profits. What is your bank investing in? Now they can be investing in companies that are fossil fuels, firearms, gambling, tobacco, and maybe these things aren't necessarily things that you want your money being used for. So it's one thing to consider when you're thinking about who you are banking with. Now obviously there's lots of layers to this. You might need a bank that has a good overdraft rate or has a good app. So you need to just factor this in. Some banks are better than others, so it's worth doing your research around this to see what their eco-credentials are like. It's also worth noting that it doesn't necessarily have to be an eco-bank to be more environmentally friendly. So have a look at some of the more mainstream options to see if they might be suitable for you too. On top of this, you then need to think about things like mortgages and loans. So when you are taking out a mortgage or taking out a loan, you're likely to be doing this from a bank or a building society. And like I say, they're going to be using the money that they make from you in form of those interest payments to then invest and make more money. So you need to think about whether you want your money to be going to this bank, this organization that might be investing your money into things that you don't support. There are eco-friendly banks out there and there are normal banks out there that are eco-friendly that might be doing more good with your money than your standard 
mortgage provider or loan provider. So you need to have a think about where you borrow your money from. Now, obviously this isn't straightforward. You can't just go, oh, I wanna move my mortgage over there. There are lots of different factors to this. So think about this when maybe you come to renew your mortgage or you take out your next mortgage, or if you need a loan, have a look around and see what your options are for eco-friendly providers. Savings are another factor. When you're putting your money in savings, you can be pretty certain that the bank is then going to be lending that out to someone else. And you need to think about where that money is going. Now, savings might be easier to move around. Yes, we might be guided by where it's offering the best interest rates. But when we start adding in some of our morals and ethics to it, maybe we should be thinking about where we put our money so that it can be supporting good causes. There are eco-friendly bonds. So these are places that are using your savings to do good things for the planet. So they take your money, they loan it out to companies that are, I don't know, planting trees or, you know, taking carbon out of the atmosphere. And then as those companies become profitable, they pay you back and you get a little bit of interest. So this can be worth looking into if you're looking at somewhere good to store your savings for maybe a slightly longer period of time. You might not necessarily get easy access versions for this, but you can probably get, you know, one, two or three year bonds where you can lock up your money for a longer period of time, make some interest and know that in the meantime, your money is doing some good. So number two then is switching your energy provider. Now this might seem like a super, super obvious one, but I'm gonna mention it here because actually it could work out cheaper than your current provider. It's never been easier than it is now to actually change your energy provider with the likes of all these comparison sites that allow you to just type in your details and then offer you like the cheapest alternatives. And they are now showing you which ones are providing green energy or renewable energy so that you can factor that into your considerations too. I recently changed our energy provider. We were previously with a green energy provider and I wanted to make sure that we continued with renewable and offset gas as we went forwards. Now, luckily the cheapest one out of all of them, even the ones with the dirty fuel options, was also the cheapest. So it worked out right for me to get cheap energy and good renewable and carbon offset gas. Also with this, we were able to get a smart meter installed for free. So we are now able to track our energy usage and we are doing even more to keep our energy usage down. So this is definitely a good one and a really great place to start. It could save you some money and you could do something great for the planet too. So number three is investments. So this is where you can have a really big impact. And remember that investing isn't just putting it in a stocks and shares ISA or a general investment account. Chances are if you have a pension that you're investing too. So you need to think about your pension when we're talking about investments. A recent study from a company called Make My Money Matter showed that where we put our investments and our pensions actually has more of an impact to the tune of 21 times than switching our energy provider, going vegetarian and stopping flying. So we're always told that these things, you know, like stopping flying, going vegan are some of the most impactful things that we can do. But if you can move your pension into some sort of ethical and environmentally friendly fund, then you could have an impact that is 21 times greater than all three of those other things combined. So this is how significant this impact is. And the way it works is that you're actually getting right to the heart of the problem. 70% of the carbon emissions in the world come from industry. So when we put our money in the industries that are doing good things and take it out of the industries that are doing bad things, then we're actually having a big impact. What happens is that these companies that are doing the bad stuff start looking at green alternatives. They want people to invest in them so they can expand their business. So they will look for greener alternatives. They will up their game and we will start seeing improvements. So this is one of the biggest and most impactful things we can do. We can look at the effects of our investments, change where we're putting our money and hopefully see some results. I've talked a lot about ethical investments on my channel, so please do go check out the other videos. But a great starting point is to look for ESG investments. So this stands for environmental, social and governance, and it scores companies based on those three things and how well they are working to be 
environmentally friendly, to ensure that they are, you know, closing gender gaps and they're treating their employees fairly, and also making sure that the people at the top aren't taking all the money and taking all the profits while the people at the bottom are just getting paid nothing okay so it's a good indicator of how ethical these companies are so like i say do your research you need to balance you you know what is right for you on a ethical level on a moral level with your financial decisions too Fortunately, what we're seeing now is actually that a lot of ethical funds are either keeping up with the performance of non-ethical funds or even exceeding. And I like to think that as we go forwards, the more and more companies will become increasingly ethical. So what we will see is that there won't be a huge difference between those that are, you know, ESG funds and those that make up the whole makeup of the global market. So number four then, is your business or your side hustle? So this one really made me think because I run a business and I want to make sure that people that come watch my videos, engage with my website, engage with my social media, aren't having an impact on carbon emissions or they aren't, you know, polluting the planet in some way. So I did some research about this and I wanted to make sure that I was doing the best I could. So most of my business is run from my house. And as I've already told you, we have green energy coming into our home. So I know that, you know, using my computer, using my camera to record these videos isn't contributing to carbon emissions in that way. But what about if you come and you watch my videos? What impact does that have? So I, I did some research into this and looked at the impact that every click on my website, for example, will have on the planet. And it turns out that this is something that I can carbon offset. You know, I'm hoping that you will look into things like your energy provider um, and this sort of thing. I also wanted to make sure that if you couldn't or if it wasn't right for you, that you didn't feel bad about engaging with my stuff. So I looked at what this costs and it turns out that to offset your usage and everybody else that interacts with my content, it would cost about a pound a year. So I have carbon offset that to make sure that my business is carbon neutral and hopefully carbon negative because I actually did a whole load more donating into carbon offsetting. So hopefully looking after your pennies is now carbon neutral or carbon negative. What does this mean for your business? So think about some of the ways that you could be impacting on the environment. This could be your business banking, okay? This could be where you run your business. Are you getting green energy into your premises? Are you using environmentally friendly packaging? Think about the systems. If you have a website, is your hosting provider, is that a green company? What about all the companies that you access as part of running your business. And if you can't find green alternatives to these, then what can you do instead? And that's what we're gonna cover in this next section. So number five is carbon offsetting. So this is kind of like the last resort. We aim to do everything we can to reduce our carbon emissions because that has the biggest impact. We want the carbon not to be out there. We want it, if we can reduce it or stop it in some way, then that's the best thing that we can do. But what if we can't do that? Well, then we can look at something called carbon offsetting. And this is something you can do both in your personal life and in your business life too. So I first noticed this idea of carbon offsetting as a consumer when we were traveling. So lots of airlines were allowing me to pay extra to carbon offset our flights. And I did that whenever that was an option. So I like to think that we were trying to travel in a carbon neutral way. But I recently came across an app, and this is, this is not an ad, I'm not working with this company, this is just a recommendation. So I found an app called Yeezy, okay? I'll leave the link in the description. Now Yeezy is an app, and what it does is it links to your bank, and it allows you to see how much of a carbon footprint each of your transactions will have left. So for example, because I use green energy, it knows that the company that's providing that energy provides green energy, so I don't need to carbon offset that. But it does look at, say, things like my food shopping and then makes a, a rough guess about how much of a carbon footprint that shopping will have had. And then I have an option to make a payment to offset that. So carbon offsetting is the idea that there are companies out there that can take the carbon out of the atmosphere and there are lots of different ways they can do this. Planting trees is like the obvious one. So planting more trees on your behalf to reduce some of the carbon that's in the atmosphere. There are other things that they can do too. So when you are carbon offsetting, you are making a payment towards these organizations and they will remove a certain amount of carbon from the atmosphere on your behalf. 
So Yeezy allows you to do this in your personal life. There are also some business alternatives to this as well, and there are a few options out there. I am still looking into the ones that I think are like good and legitimate, and I will report back on what I find. But if you can't completely cut your carbon footprint in your business, then you can maybe look at doing some sort of carbon offsetting scheme and becoming a carbon neutral business here in the UK or abroad. Now obviously this only focuses on you know, carbon emissions, but it is a step forward. That is what is you know, affecting the climate and it can have a good impact. If all businesses focused on being carbon neutral or carbon negative, then we'd be in a far better position. So there you go, that's my eco-friendly finances for you. Different ways, different strategies that you can use to make sure that your finances are environmentally friendly and more specifically climate friendly. I hope it's been useful for you today. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and get notifications so that you will get an alert when I drop my next video, which should be in a couple of days. If you have any other eco-friendly or you know climate-friendly suggestions, I would love for you to leave them in the comments. I'm always looking out, particularly for new like technology that can support this or places that I can invest that actually benefit the planet. Thank you so much for watching today. It's been a pleasure to have you here and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.